one, go. Cool, so this is 007 Nightfire, um, one of the most unappreciated James Bond games because most of the attention goes to Goldeneye, but this game is really cool and hopefully you guys are going to enjoy this run. Um, first, first thing to note is that movement is done by strafing. You always move either diagonally up and left or diagonally up and right because like many games it's just weirdly faster. Oh, there's quite a few tricks in this run which are kind of tough but I should get through them alright. Hopefully they'll be cool for you guys to see. Um, second thing to mention about movement is that we tend to jump upstairs because when you walk up them it just takes forever for some reason and shit. Excellent. 30 seconds in I've already sworn and messed up. Oh my god! <laughs> alright, well, solid. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you jump upstairs because it's faster, you like somehow glide up them and stuff. Um, that spotlight that caught me is completely RNG, um, it's just, ha sometimes it gets you, sometimes it doesn't. Um, when it does it spawns a few guys who rip into you, and as you can see I've got no health now, so, good. And I need to, I need to take full damage in a little bit, so, that might be a problem. Right, so one of the main tricks we do in this game is clipping, um, which you'll see the first clip in a second. I'll explain it afterwards. So it's here and like that, fall through the floor and go like that. Right. So how the clipping works in this game is you kind of crouch down and take a step away from like a tiny ledge that's like I don't know, like waist height, and then for some reason when you like step into it and then like stand up and change gadget for some reason it like pushes you through the floor which enables us to skip quite a lot of the sections in the game um, it's it's a pretty cool clip, it's kind of a pain to learn but once you get it it's alright um, these are really... okay I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm on way too low health for this <laughs> Doesn't matter, I'm James Bond. This is like... This is just world record pace. But yeah, the, the whole clipping thing is pretty cool. Um, <laughs> no! Um, <laughs> like I say, it saves us a lot of time and I'll be doing it in a few places. Some of which are really cool to watch. Those hinges look like they could build pretty easily. Test out my laser on them, would you, 007? Most of the levels are relatively short, and because of the glitches we do, some of the levels are just crazy short. Um, and I look forward to showing you guys them in a little bit. <sighs> so this is a quick strat here. Basically, this like this helicopter flies in. It's like a boss fight thing. And if you line up this rocket launcher in the right spot, you can just fire rockets off and kill it, like, really quickly. You're supposed to use it kind of guided, like, in a casual run, and kind of guide the missiles in. But obviously that takes forever, which is not what we want in two Cool. So, that's that. This next level is unfortunately an auto-scroller. We have two auto scroller sections in this game. Oh god, the Cohen Haynes has started. God damn it. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's like two auto scroller sections in this game. They're not that bad. I've kind of become numb to them now. Um, there's quite a. There's quite what used to be like a heavy reset point on the level after this. And. It used to be absolute hell to run because you do the level you just saw, then spend three minutes doing an auto scroller like this, and then just have to reset on the next level. And it was. It wasn't so much the whole resetting thing, it was more the fact that you had to sit through this auto scroller every time, which is obviously no fun for anyone. But yeah, the, since that, the glitch 
I mentioned has become a lot more consistent and hopefully you'll see it first time. So like I said, even though this is Nautis Scroller, there are a couple of time saves. For example, these guys here that I'm shooting, I shoot these explosive barrels early. There are certain kind of triggers in this in this um, level where the snowmobile will kind of slow down to let you shoot people, and then if you kill them faster, it then speeds up and carries on. So the quicker you can kill people in certain sections, the faster it goes. It's not too bad. Like, like when you're doing a run, if you mess up this level, you maybe lose like two seconds, three seconds max. It's not bad. There's a guy here you can shoot like in the cutscene. That's too low. You can like shoot him in the cutscene, which is kind of funny. It's not really a time save, but. On the left. Also, there's a couple of random things in this, like, regardless of it being an auto-scroller, um, when you explode some of the enemy snowmobiles, they can kind of flip in the way sometimes, and the, the, the path of your snowmobile can kind of get crossed with theirs and end up flipping you and doing loads of weird shit. Um, generally doesn't happen very much, but it can be kind of hilarious. That kind of gate thing I just destroyed there, um, There's like a strat where you like shoot a switch on the side and it opens up the gate but it's much slower, it's faster just to shoot it like that. Hopefully my controller mashing won't be too loud, I tend to like smash the controller so if it is let me know and I'll like hide it under the desk or something. And the last strat of this run is there's a guy who's going to pass across here and if I time this right, which I did but it didn't work, you can shoot him early and just that's not meant to happen. This, this is what I mean about the kind of RNG of the snowmobiles, they can get in your way and screw up your pathing, but, but yeah. Um, this next level is one of the cooler tricks on the run. We have a lot of cool tricks later on in the whole clipping thing, but this is the only like major out of bounds type thing. and. Like I said, it used to be. It used to be like 1 in 12 times you'd get it, which was obviously really painful for running. But basically, what you do, this, um, this entire level is like one long linear driving thing. But what we do is we drive to here and get this cop car to follow us. Make sure it's actually following me. And then, if you get the right angle up here, it can drive into you, knock you out of bounds, and you can drive straight to the end of the level. Awesome. Awesome. First time. Nice. So, that's just flipped me out of bounds where you're not supposed to go. We drive through here, and that little kind of the uh, silhouette you can see at the end there, that is actually the end zone of the, this level. Um, how you're supposed to do it casually is like, drive around this entire like icy racetrack through a village and mountains and stuff and it takes forever so this is like one of the major time saves on the run there is like a super bounce thing that can happen hopefully it won't happen but when I fall down here now and land on this ice and don't bounce don't bounce okay cool um, and this is the end zone of the level so you skip the entire thing and yeah, it's a really cool trick. One other thing I'll mention about this, this being a vehicle level is we always do vehicle levels in first person because the, the frame rate in third person is just horrific. Like, certain things like the dust being thrown up by the tyres and stuff just causes ridiculous amounts of lag. So, we do all of them, all the vehicle levels first person. So yeah, I'm really happy about that because that level was a bit of a worry because it can be really relentless sometimes.
this is one of most of the runners' favourite levels to do. It's, it's just relatively fun, really. It's, it's not any major, like, clips or anything, so it's pretty consistent. A couple of cool little things. What am I doing? My aimbot's off. We have a uh, donation if we have time. For yeah, it's fine. Um, Ten dollar donation from Bitter Space. Yay! So let's go, Ollie. You got this. Put this donation toward Drake Percent. So Drake Percent has been met, but by all means, keep the donations coming. Thank Cheers, Peter. Peter is a good friend. He's another Nightfire runner. He's between us. And to be fair, mainly him has found a lot of the new strats in this game. Um, basically, this game was ran like a couple of years ago, and then me and Fitter both randomly decided to run it. Like I think it was like late October, November time. We both decided to start running it, and there was no one else running it at the time. And we fell madly in love and started finding loads of strats. So that's kind of been like that since end of last year. And it's pretty cool. Since we've done it, we've managed to find a lot of cool stuff in this, and we've actually found like loads of cool new clips in the last couple of days, which has saved a load of time, and the run is gradually just changing all the time, which is awesome. Um, you saw me do a little ledge hop thing there, I climbed over a little rail, that's just like a short time, so you just put the weight to walk around the house, but it's fast doing that. Um, there are certain out-of-bounds things and clips you can do in this level, but because of how it works, you have to kind of move around and kill the guys take, who have the, the girls hostage. And because it, because of that objective, when you kind of start like, clipping through the floor and stuff, um, it can make it even slower, really, because it's kind of pointless. You need to kill that sniper because the sniper is used as a strat on the boss at the end of this. Also something I didn't mention that can happen is one of the girls back there, when you go through a wall and like shoot a guy, this guy with a shotgun can just like randomly turn around and shoot her in the face, which ruins everything. And again, it's one of those things you have no control over. Oh no, nah, okay, we're going no scope strats. Everyone told me not to do no scope strats. Oh. So yeah. This next level, Night Shift, is a stealth level. Um, and like two two days ago, I was just messing about, and I found I found a clip which saves like quite a lot of time, and it is frame perfect. Unfortunately, we've recently put two frame perfect tricks in the game, which is just kind of shooting ourselves in the foot. So because this is a stealth level, you can't shoot anyone, but you can stun them and punch them, which is pretty hilarious. So basically, this elevated door, you're supposed to like walk around. Oh, first time, awesome. You're supposed to like walk around to the security room and press a button to open that and walk back around. But we found you can just clip through the door like that. Which I'm really happy with because it's frame perfect and I've been... It's very temperamental. Don't forget that your glasses can detect hidden laser tripwires. That cool. looks like the target computer. Install the Q-worm into that device and we're in business. Whoa, okay. So yeah, this next block of like three levels is the, 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 the kind of uh, glitch intensive bit of the run. There are loads of clips we do, which are quite difficult and stuff, and they're all really cool and save so much time. Um, but it's a kind of stressful point of the run because you have like three levels of constant clipping. Use the exterior elevator to gain access. Cool, so there's a couple of clips I'm gonna do here. You go through this air vent thing at the top, and you're supposed to like kind of hook around through some rooms, but you can just clip through the corner there. 
which is cool. That stairwell bond. The clipping in this game is really awesome to do. It, it it takes like a little while to get used to, but then as soon as you kind of get a feel for it, it becomes super easy. And it's weird because like every clip is unique, even though you're doing the same motion. Depending on how the corner is or what the ledge is like or whatever, it really does vary. They use computers in this room. Upload the Q-worm into it. There's also one clip at the end of this level which I probably shouldn't go for. But I'll do it. Basically you have to pick up a parachute from that chopper and then jump off the ledge. But you can just through the floor like that. I am getting all the strats today, this is ridiculous. <laughs> right, this next level chain reaction. <sighs> yeah, um, this level, <laughs> this level we had a completely different route for. The, the entire route has changed uh, two days ago, which I found new strats which we use, which are awesome. But, yeah, they were found two days ago, so... Fingers crossed. I've been practicing it like mad. And it's pretty good, but... It's, it's kind of interesting, because most of our clips are just falling through the floor and then just kind of skipping like a room or something. Whereas this one is seam walking. So we clip down... No. Uh. <laughs> oh god, I'm being sniped. Go away. No. No. <laughs> okay. Okay, I, okay, well. My hand's just like frozen up. Oh my god. Ah, sick. So that's set up for, for Wrong Borb. Um, well, one strat I didn't mention is when you jump down here, you need to take a photo of that jetpack thing there. And rather than like stopping and taking a picture of it, it's fast fast just to jump down and snap the pick while you're on your way down. Time for a donation? Yeah, cool. So we got five dollars from the Tones 22. First try on EV and first time clip on DC. Come on, first try on PF. Hopefully. I mean, this is going great. So basically, that last section, basically, it happened! Um, that last section, um, <laughs> uh, you, um, you're supposed to like do all this zipline stuff and it takes forever, um, but clipping into that building gets rid of all of that, which is nice. Also thank you for the donation tones. This level is actually... The game recommends it as like a 20 minute like timer for this level, like the goal is 20 minutes um, and doing it with these new strats is like 1 minute 20 which is ridiculous. Okay. But once again just this new seam walking thing, the same principle as last time, we need to get into this building on our right and you have to do this entire section where you climb up cranes and stuff and it takes forever, but, oh nice, cool. You can seam walk and jump into the building like so. And what's also nice about doing this, it was the same on the other one, I didn't mention it. Um, there's normally loads of enemies in here, but because of because of the fact that you're clipping in, it doesn't trigger them to spawn until now, which is cool. Awesome, it's going really well. Thank you everyone for hanging out and watching, by the way. It's good to get some appreciation for this game. We work really hard on it. Right, this level is my personal favourite because you basically just clip the entire thing. This first section, there is a stairwell that you're supposed to fight down. You fight loads of guys down it, it takes forever. Um, what we do is clip and skip the entire thing, go through the floor, fall down, hit the load zone, and done. And that's like my personal favourite trick of the run because, like I say, you're supposed to fight your way down it and there's loads of guys and that's just like, I don't know, it's awesome. So, like I said, how this level works is you run forward there, you run forward here, do, no, um, run forward there, clip, 
run forward here, clip, and then run forward and you've completed the level. So you basically have to do nothing. This next trick coming up is the second frame perfect trick of the run. So, pray for Ollie. Basically, I keep saying basically, it's in my head now. God damn. Um, <laughs> this section is like, you have to ride on the top of this elevator, and it takes a long time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Uh, it's not happening. It's not happening. It's too late. It's too late. Right, hang on. So, you're supposed to like clip their first time with this frame perfect trick, and it's ridiculous. You can do it now, still. If I can get it. Come on. Well, my hands are like. There we go. Right. Jesus. Um, how that works is this, like, the long elevator shaft, and there's a load zone right at the bottom. And you have to wait for the elevator to slowly go down and hit the bottom to end that section. But by clipping through the floor, we can just fall straight down there. And it reduces the section by a huge amount. It's awesome. But unfortunately, it is frame perfect, so... We have kind of shot ourselves in the foot by putting these two frame perfect tricks in, but you know, it's all about them dank strats. I'm not actually doing that badly time wise. So, this level's an interesting one. You're basically in the Aston Martin, but it's a submarine. Kind of like Spy Who Loved Me style. And you have to sneak around and stuff. Once again, we do it in first person because it's just not as smooth in third person. Gotta save them frames. Your remote torpedoes aren't as powerful Good thing for me is there's only one hard trick left in this run. Most of those glitches I was worried about, but they went really well, which is awesome. I'm glad I got to show them to you guys because Oh, they're really cool. So, there's these sections where there's that laser grid thing, and you have to fire this remote torpedo through them to destroy the, I don't know, power box or whatever it is to turn them off. And the way we do it, you drive like straight um, towards the lasers, and when you, when you fire the rocket, it stops you exactly where you are, so you can just go full speed up to it and then time pressing it. You can you can shoot it with a regular torpedo as well, but you have to be really accurate, so RTA it's not really uh, not really viable. There's also these mines that used to be a bit of a problem, but when you practice this level they just kind of become second nature and you don't really care about them anymore. Like this one, you go straight towards it and it doesn't hit you. Stuff like that. There isn't a lot of time saving this level, it's kind of just pathing. There are a few things, but generally it's just movement. Which you'll see an example of in the next section. Right, double oh seven. Now get out of there. So this next bit is you have to follow this submarine here to their base and like there's loads of doors along the way that won't open unless you follow it through so you can't just shoot this one you have to follow it we kind of call this like a race section and there's a few points in this where you can save time just by taking the optimal route other than that it's a pretty standard level it's pretty just straightforward it is quite nice though because after three levels of stressful clips it's quite nice just to have like a bit of time in the run to chill out.
there is a thing that can happen at the end of this, which hopefully won't happen. But um, because you get ahead of it in the next section, you kind of cut in front of it, and depending on how far ahead you are, it can kind of glitch inside you and end up throwing you into the wall and stuff, which messes things up. It doesn't normally happen, but... You see here I cut this corner, so he's now behind me. Ah, uh, they ah, uh, it happened. All right, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like that can be worse. It can like completely throw you into the wall and ruin everything. Once again, section here you drive straight up to the laser and fire the torpedo. Now this last section is the one kind of choke point of this run. There's like this boss submarine thing you have to fight, and it's torpedoes it fires one shot you. And we have some fast rats to do it, but it's it's kind of temperamental. So what I tend to do is go here, lock on, fire, and then kind of hide up here for a sec, and then go because the missiles it fires it fires will destroy you. And that's literally right at the end of the level, so that can kind of be quite painful. Sweet. Almost done already, what's happening? This is the longest level of the game. It's it's part vehicle, part auto scroller, and then like there's this turret section at the end. Once again, going first person to save frames, because the dust from those tires you can see slows it down. Now we have tried going out of bounds in this level similar to the snow one you saw earlier. Um, and it can be done. It's kind of TAS only, but it can be done RTA. We haven't, we didn't really look into it past that because, again, this, this is a very linear level and you have to, you have to follow this path and shoot down these turret things. Oh my god. You have to shoot down these turret things, so even if you do go out of bounds, it's kind of, again, a bit pointless because you need to follow the path anyway to pass the objectives, so... But we are hopeful for finding something on this level because... It's kind of ridiculous, like, the first few levels of the run, with all those glitches, are all over within 20 minutes, and then these next couple of levels, the last one, the one I'm doing now, and the next one, take, like, 15 minutes on their own, which is insane. So we, we are working on trying to cut it down, but... Let me know when a good time for uh, donations is. Uh, now's fine, man. Alright, so we got a donation for $5 from Faked Invert. Frame Perfect Tricks Hype. Shout out to Fitter and Ollie for making me want to run this amazing game. <laughs> nice. Cheers, Faked. You should run it. That's what I'm going to get onto next. So this is the end of the driving level. You have this like turret fight thing. Shoot these guys early so they don't get in the way. And then shoot this guy once and twice. And then collect the armor. And that starts the flying level. Now this this flying section has um very little time save in it. There there's a couple of bits where you can shoot things quickly. For example, here, I shoot this bridge quickly. It triggers this cutscene, and there's like a couple of things like that. But yeah, there's not a lot happens here, it's just me driving and shooting things, so what I will mention is that if anyone likes the look of this run and wants to get into the game, we're like, we're, we're quite a small community, but we are building up quite well, and um, it's a really easy game to get into. Because of the nature of it, because of the way all the glitches work and everything, you can do a completely glitchless run with just like some basic movement and get a sub 50 run. Which, especially if you're if you're kind of getting into speed running and don't want to run like two hour games, it's really quick and nice to do. I previously ran Pokemon Sapphire when I started speed running in the summer, which was about two hours, two and a half hours, and going from that to this was so nice and so relaxing. Yeah, the current world record is by me, and it's it's like 42 minutes something. It'll be sub-42 soon with these new strats. But 
regardless of the world record being 42 minutes, even if you just do a run glitchless, you can still get sub 50 easily. And the really cool thing about it is, like I say, because of the nature of it and because of all the glitches and everything, you can literally learn it glitchless and then say you want to decide to do one clip on one level, do that, save 20 seconds, when you're confident, put the next one in. And you know, it really makes it... It makes the game really accessible and easy to pick up. On top of that, um, Fit of Space has made a ton of guides for you. There's like a two hour tutorial, loads of individual stuff. And we're all really active as a community. We're all happy to help out and really active Discord and everything. So yeah, if anyone is interested in running this game, make sure to pop up in our streams, give us a message or something. Because we're trying to get it as much popularity as it can because it's really it's a, it's a really fun run, it's really cool, easy to learn. And this game needs more appreciation because GoldenEye takes all of it. And that's just 4%. We have another donation from Keystone Light. Ten dollars says Mingli, basically Mingli. <laughs> Damn it. But yeah, like I was saying, if you guys, if anyone likes to look at this run and wants to get into it at any point, we're all happy to help out. You can run it on PS2, Xbox, GameCube. Um, there, there's a PC version, but it's a completely different game. Which you can run, but none of us do, because it's pretty bad. Um, you can also run on emulator if you like. We don't count emulator runs for world record because the, the loading times are ridiculous. But... It's a good way to start learning the game, especially. I'm doing pretty well on time, actually. I'm pretty impressed that all the glitches have gone well. Except for the Phoenix Fire Frame Perfect one. All the other ones have gone ridiculously well, so I can't complain about that. I'm really happy they did get well because the whole point of this is for me to show off the game to you. I know everyone loves glitches and stuff, so it's good to be able to show them off. I think our community is just destroying chat right now, so sorry about that. <laughs> I swear they're good people. Except for Hashtag Bamboo. So yeah, that's the end of the flying section. Um, <laughs> oh, it's going to kill me. That's the end of the flying section, and then this last section of the level is this turret thing. A couple of time saves here. Basically, I hate myself every time I say it. These tanks and planes fly at you, and I believe the quicker you kill them, the quicker it triggers the next ones to appear. So, it's just shooting quickly really. And then also at the end this big submarine is going to appear and you destroy it by shooting this certain spot on it. Which because it's a video game explodes the entire thing. Um, and again that's timed and the faster you do it the faster level completes. And then we have another one of everyone's favourite levels. They legit banned it, did they actually? <laughs> Don't ban Paul, oh my god! <laughs> Fucking hell. Oh, he's gonna be so pissed at me. Oh my god, did they actually ban him? I've discovered a weakness, James. Did they actually ban Paul? At the base of the weapon, but you'll only have a short time to get out before the whole thing goes. <laughs> uh. They actually ban him! Oh, I'm so sorry. Don't hate me. He's going to hate me. Anyway. <laughs> God damn it. This level countdown is the second last level of the run. There's something in my eye I can't see. Okay, this is a 
second last level of the run, and it's a pretty cool one. Some nifty little strats we do. So the first thing I'm going to do is throw down these remote mines by a door. Because how this first section works is you run through the level to this, like, security room, and then you backtrack all the way, and then when you get to here, you kill a guy that comes out of that door, and it triggers the loading zone to the next area to unlock, which is that silvery door in front of me there, Delta Sector. So I set the remote mines down, so when I come back here, rather than running down the corridor and shooting him, you can just blow him up quickly. Also the frame rate always drops here for some reason. In terms of running the game again on various consoles, there is pretty much no differences that we know of. There, there seems to be there seems to be really minute version differences between like PAL and NTSC, but it's nothing major at all, so it's no kind of worries like that. If you were wanted to get into it from whatever region. I don't like how Bourne's not chatting. Is he going to turn up at my house later on or something? <laughs> so yeah, um, now we run back to where I was before. I need to make sure I kill a couple of these guys on the way because they're guns I will need later. From them. Cool, that's enough for that guy anyway. So then here's the cool strat. You get the remote mine trigger out, wait here, wait to see him appear in the doorway, blow him up, turn around, go through the door. Which saves a lot of time from... <laughs> Porn! Oh dear. Right, coming up is arguably the hardest trick in the run. When we when I started running this game, this trick was our this this trick was TAS only, um, because of the nature of it. And we now do it. We found some slightly consistent ways, but this is considered the hardest trick in the run. So bear with. Okay, okay, I got it. Cool. Hang on. Uh, nice. Cool. So, what happened there, that kind of silo section you saw me shoot through at the start, um, how that section works, it's basically a giant loop of those silos, you just keep going through them in a big loop until you get to that one I just went through, but using the clip we can, it's essentially like you've gone from like the start of the loop backwards to the end, if that makes sense. And that clip is particularly hard to do because... Where you saw me jump into the rocks, where it was like half rocky and half out of bounds, there's loads of walls there. There's like a ceiling, some awkward walls in places, so when you make the jump back in bounds, there's loads of obstacles that can knock you and mess things up. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit... It's kind of annoying. There are certain visual cues you can use and ways to make it consistent, but it's one of those tricks that even when you think it's consistent, sometimes it just screws you over. And then this section is just long. Basically what happens in this section is you just have to wait for these rockets to launch and kill people in between each one. So. You have no control over the time here, unfortunately. Cool, and now I've got to wait a minute for the next one to appear, so... I set remote mines ready for the next guys, so I can just explode them and complete the level. And now we wait, because, you know... Nothing better in a speed run than waiting. How does it feel to be beaten, James? Ba -da, ba -do -do, ba -do -do, ba -do -do. So 
how's everyone doing? This is, this is nice, this is a nice, yep, the code, yeah, that, 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 that's important. Miscellaneous things, yep, yeah. Con confirm target, yeah, that, that's really, that, that, that's a thing. Um, yeah, unfortunately the run has to have things like this in. But we are, we, we are pretty decent at finding new stuff and hopefully we're going to continue to cut the run down as much as we can. So then to win this level, it's really important you do this. You wait, you blow it up, you run forward, you get the camera, you take a picture of Kiko because Fitter loves her, and then net level complete. They're targeting the whole world, yeah. <laughs> and then if you wanted to get even more far-fetched, we're in space now. <laughs> So, yeah, this is the last level of the run. Um, there are some time saves in it. Basically, what's going to happen, all these rockets are going to trigger and you have to, like, shoot them to disarm them. And the faster you do it, the faster it triggers the next ones and stuff. And, yeah, it's, again, it's not a major time save, but it's enough. Why is Fitter timed out? God damn it. <laughs> so it's important in this section to focus the rockets. You have these guys that appear from time to time, but it's important to focus the rockets because they're what control the time. There's also this giant laser that shoots you, which can kind of ruin things a little bit. Not so bad on operative, but on other um, categories that can get in the way a little bit. Wrecked. I don't know what was. I, I really should have recorded chat to read it out for this because I don't know what's been happening. That guy's killed himself, nice. This is actually a really fast run. This is awesome. We're going to be super ahead of schedule. Unless I mess up the incentive thing. Oh, I missed him. I haven't missed any of them yet. God damn, I'm such a scrub. Give up. Tiring from speed running. So, there's one more trick in the run, which is really cool. It's, it's like a really nice way to round the run off. What's going to happen is, once I've killed these guys and done these rockets, Drake, the main antagonist who is in there, the theme of his little spacesuit, he's going to pop out of the space station because it starts exploding. And you have to have a fight with him. And it's kind of funny because he's using like a rocket launcher in space, which is kind of ridiculous. But regardless, um, you have to have this fight with him. And th this gun that I'm using, this laser gun thing, it has an overcharge mode. So you see right where I fire it, it heats up on the bar on the right, and then um, kind of kind of like overheats. You can actually purposefully overcharge it. Eey. You can overcharge it to um, fire like one really powerful blast. And that's what we do to kill him. We aim in a certain spot here. You, and you wait for an audio cue. And you should, if you do it right, you will kill him as soon as he falls down. And time will be coming up after that. The time will be very soon. Like, I'll tell you when. Get it? Nice. That saves the entire fight. And time is in three, two, one. Time. And that's 007 Nightfire.
Alright, well done. She is. <clears throat> Forty-four twenty-three. Nice. That is that is two minutes uh, off but, my current world record. But like, add ten seconds. But yeah, it's a pretty good run. That's only two minutes off my current world record. Actually, it's not bad. Not bad. So, am I cool to go on to the incentive thing? <clears throat> what is this that we're seeing here? <laughs> What's what we're seeing? <laughs> the little video there. Oh, it's just like a credit thing they do. I don't know. Ask oh, okay. Ask EA. <laughs> <clears throat> Alright, well, thank you. Am I able to do the incentive thing now, or shall I? Yep. Go ahead. Um, cool. So, need a new timer for that, I guess? Uh, yeah, you can, actually. Yeah, sure. Alright, count it down. Okay. Three. Uh. <laughs> Sorry, one sec. I'm gonna go on my schlong for this one. Uh, right, ready? Three, two, one, go! So, this is the incentive thing. This is called Jake Percent. And <laughs> it's how you beat the game very quickly. Why isn't my jump button working? Oh, because I'm uphill. No? Okay, whatever. So yeah, we go back to the first mission of the run. And I just need to get to a section in a second. And there's a glitch I have to pull off, which is... It's quite precise. So it might take me a few attempts, but it's really quick to retry, so... It's still good. And I finished really early. So I've bought myself more time to mess this up. Cool. So what happens here in this level, we sneak into the castle, then we sneak through this back door into the party. And this is like a stealth section where you're like undercover, and if you hit anyone or do anything, then the mission fails. But... Nope. So you see like that, I punched him, mission fail, and you have to retry. But you can cause a glitch if you pause the game at the exact time you punch him. You'll know if it's worked because you'll hear the punch sound as I pause it. That was close. I don't think it got it, that was close. No, I got it, nice. Awesome. So, as you can see, I've now failed the mission, but unlike last time, it didn't freeze me and reset. I'm still playing. But what's actually happened is the game is softlocks. Uh, ugh, the game is softlocked. Um, so, all the sound's gone and no one knows you're here. But what you can now do is kill everyone. So, there's Kiko. Just gonna. Remember Kiko from the last level? Yeah, she's dead. She doesn't matter anymore. You can tase this guy and get past him. And then again, no one knows you're here, which is pretty great. <laughs> oh dear. This might be Drake Percent world record. I'm not sure. <laughs> So then you come down here, and who is it? But Drake! Remember the guy in the spacesuit from the end? Yeah? 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 No, not anymore. And that is time. That is Drake percent. He dead. So, 252. Sweet. So if Bond knew how to glitch, he could have just saved that entire saga that you saw over the last hour. <laughs> It's a dumb little category we put in, but it's pretty funny. I don't know why the glitch happens, but pretty great. And then if you're just a horrible person, you can walk around and just slaughter the rest of the party. In silence, which makes it that bit more eerie. But anyway, that's Drake Percent. I hope you guys enjoyed the run and whatever the hell you want to call this. Um, like I say, if you want to get involved in the community, there's loads of us who are really active and, you know do it. Don't think about it, do it. 
Look into his eyes. Do it. Uh, thanks, ESA, for having me. Thanks, everyone, for watching. This has been awesome. And enjoy the rest of the marathon. There's a lot of cool games coming up.